Howdy folks, good noon time, how are we all doing? Here's a second video today. I'm over visiting, basically, it's a national monument that is in association with the National Park Service in Bradenton, Florida. This is something called the DeSoto National Monument. So, I'll explain in a second. But then, you have a chance to view the Manatee River, which will then eventually empty out into the bay, thus leading into the Gulf. Boy, oh boy, are these waves rather strong right now because of the gale winds coming from the uh, approximately the northwest. But with that being said, the park is devoted to an individual named Fernando de Soto. And he is originally from Spain. I'm sure as you can tell by the pronunciation of the name. Now, he was a very well-known explorer, just like Ponce de Leon. But the thing is, Fernando de Soto was after Ponce de Leon. So, Mr. De Soto, he originally served under another individual during the expedition of Cuba as a means of providing new settlement for the Spanish Empire under the King of Aragorn and the Queen Castillo as well. So with that being said, Spain, you know, especially in the 1500s, was a very powerful empire. And basically, Hernando de Soto invested most of his life funds, you know, his wealth, to lead a new expedition. Because when he was in Cuba, he was basically an honored governor basically, or just a very prominent figure, I should say, as a rephrase. So because he was bored of his luxurious life, he really wanted to get a piece of that adrenaline once again, that piece of adventure. So as a result, he wanted to have a chance to explore a bit more of what was recognized then as the New World. Now, rest assured, to many Europeans, this was the New World. But you have to still figure, for thousands of years beforehand, there were still other explorers who went to visit these types of lands. Now, you may be wondering, what was Hernando de Soto really after? Well, let's just say he was really after a precious metal called gold. And you know, to many Spaniards, gold was a very valuable metal, which essentially symbolized wealth and power. But here, it shows you the De Soto Expedition Trail. It just tells you a bit of the ecology that is located here. It talks mostly about upland hammocks, mangroves, and just a little bit about the history of this area. So yes, since he was after a conquest of gold and trying to establish new settlement, he was actually unsuccessful. You know, he had a group of up to, I believe, 700 men during when his expedition began. But then, you know, the expedition lasted from 1539 to basically 1543. It was basically a four-year expedition. And it wasn't only in Florida either that they explored. They explored what is now Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and even 
as far west as Arkansas. So you can say that they've even explored the Mississippi River too. But unfortunately, during his whole entire expedition, he was rather unsuccessful. And at a certain time, as he was, I believe, in Alabama, trying to head back to the Gulf via the Mississippi River, he actually ran into a leader by the name of Tuscaloosa. Now, yeah, you can actually see some figures right here. How about that? <laughs> Howdy. Tuscaloosa was a leader at the time who seemed rather friendly to DeSoto, but he pulled the ultimate deception. At the same time, Tuscaloosa was alerting any other indigenous communities that there were European explorers. And essentially, at one of the settlements in Alabama, DeSoto's crew had an ambush. But fortunately, they managed to beat the Indians. Up to 2,500 death casualties, I should say. That's a lot. And like, that's the thing back then. People would oftentimes have ulterior motives and stab each other in the back. Pun intended. <laughs> But unfortunately, DeSoto essentially got wounded, and he also contracted a fever, and thus, he wasn't able to survive. And his death was, I believe, in 1543. So then the rest of his men, who he was leading, they eventually went into a northern Mexico settlement called Punco. And that's essentially where all accounts of the expedition remain intact. But the thing is, DeSoto did not actually land in this specific location. He was actually a bit further up north, by about 10 miles or so. And it was a bit closer to the Tampa Bay, in which we're actually not too far from there. But back in the 60s, this was actually a land parcel that was purchased by many local residents and they wanted to devote this piece of land towards Hernando de Soto's life. Just imagine back then, you know, you're entering a land that other people already inhabit and not all of them are going to be friendly. So they, they always had to be constantly alert. And the thing is, too, a lot of the Spanish back then brought pigs over. So, with that being said, that actually explains why Florida has been known to have invasive wild boars. Because, you know, year, you know, centuries ago those generations of wild boar were brought here so hope you guys enjoyed that little history lesson this is a neat spot to visit by the way and it's absolutely free and you really have an excellent view of the manatee river especially today it's finally clearing up a little bit too it was very overcast so, all right, you guys, take care, enjoy your Sunday, and journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.